Welcome to Runnymede Public School. We're here in the heart of the city of Toronto, Canada's largest city. My name's Hilary Inwood and I'm an educator at the University of Toronto. But I've also been a parent volunteer here for the past 13 years. I've been working alongside a really dedicated team of parents, teachers and children who have helped transform the schoolyard into an amazing outdoor classroom. I've been working on environmental artworks with the children over the last few years and I'm going to share those with you today. This garden stone pathway was created as a way to deal with a local environmental challenge. It was created by 175 grade 8 students in teamwork with artist Lois Dellert and they created these concrete stones as a way to direct children to walk on this part of the garden. This whole raised bed is full of trees and the tree roots are getting compacted by children running over top of them. The stone pathways feature images of the environment, messages about the environment that are created by children and they were put into each of these stones. The children now walk on the stones rather than on the tree roots so it solved our problem and added a really beautiful element to our schoolyard. We're here in the kindergarten, which is the newest part of the Runnymede schoolyard. It's a lovely area that's dedicated to primary learners, kindergarten to grade three. It was specifically created with uh, one of the key concepts of kindergarten in mind, the five senses. And this underlies uh, some of the fundamental learning that happens in our kindergarten classes. Uh, all of the plants in the garden have been selected to respond to one of the five senses, though many of them respond to more. But we're also growing art in this garden, not just uh, plants. And the art also supports those key concepts. On the one wall, we've got a whole series of uh, birdhouses and birds that have been painted by kindergarten children. They're also painting with plants in this garden. In the springtime, it's full of spring flowers, daffodils and tulips that the children have planted themselves. And then we've just had a new series of paintings that have been added that each celebrate one of the five senses, again, created by the kindergarten students. So this really has become their space and they're going to grow right alongside it over the years. This series of paintings was specifically chosen for this area of the schoolyard. We're on a side street and this is where parents pull their cars up and uh, often will idle them while they're waiting for their kids after school. This grade six class was uh, really careful in their uh, choice of putting the paintings here. Some of the paintings contain messages about anti-idling to remind parents to turn off their engines. But they also decided to expand it to include a whole range of other challenges that face this neighborhood, including um, littering, uh, graffiti work, uh, maintaining animal, uh, animals' homes and habitat, uh, and even pulling invasive species, uh, plant species, out of the garden. So the children really did a wonderful job of creating not only a very colorful display on the fence, but also sending some really important messages to the local community. I thought you might like to see the art gallery we've got in the back of the school in our adventure play yard, which is a, a part of the yard that's focused for young learners. Uh, this is a great space and I love it because we've turned this whole fence, which is normally a cold and sterile part of the schoolyard, into something that really is the children's own. They were uh, encouraged to go into the naturalized part of the schoolyard, which sits right behind this fence, and observe seasonal changes as part of their science and their art classes. They made sketches and drawings, and then they turned those drawings into uh, paintings that are done on cedar fence board with exterior latex house paint, so it's a very inexpensive art material. And we've then popped these up with fence ties onto this fence. It's a lovely way to turn what can be a relatively cold schoolyard into something that is the children's own. So let me show you an example of graffiti. Graffiti, sometimes also known as knit bombing, is a way to draw attention to objects in the everyday world that people would normally not pay any attention to. This was made by a grade five class and their teacher. Uh, the teacher every year taught her students how to knit, but we put our heads together a couple of years ago and decided we'd try knitting a tree sweater. The children each knit one or two small squares and we attached them onto the tree as a way to draw attention to their favorite oak tree in the schoolyard. Great science project, great art project, and I love that somebody's added a little doll on the front of it uh, to boot. We've had such luck with this, uh, the animals seem to love it as much as the children do. Squirrels and birds have been seen taking pieces of wool off to their nests, and this year we've had a whole collection of cicadas leaving their exoskeletons in the tree as well. So I think this is a work of art I can say safely is loved by all in the school garden.
So we're in the school's butterfly garden. It's a lovely area that's filled with indigenous plant species and you can see the butterfly bushes in particular are in full bloom at this time of the year. And it was meant as a way to study butterflies as part of the science curriculum. We've also created a series of artwork. So even in the winter time when the bushes are dormant, we have a wonderful series of butterflies on the back fence created by primary children. Uh, part of our community yard days where children come and investigate the garden and help with its maintenance, children as part of that made clay butterflies. We uh, put them in a kiln to fire them and then we pulled them out and had the kindergarten students actually glaze them. So you see a riot of colors in the background that livens up even the snowiest day here in the school garden. So welcome to the Peace Circle. This is a really uh, beautiful part of the schoolyard that was created to make a quiet, contemplative place for children to play, to have conversations, to sit and enjoy nature. Uh, in this circle, we have a number of rocks for seating purposes, and each one has been inscribed with the 10 traits of character education, words like respect, empathy, and kindness, all words that we need uh, in our lives in order to create positive environmental change. The circle involves three trees that will grow. They're very small right now, but they'll grow to incorporate a beautiful shady area for children, really important on schoolyards. And they've also been framed by a lovely series of paintings that the children created, all of their own imagery on what they think peace should be like in the world. This mural was created as a little way to bring the naturalized school garden at the back of the school into our sports field on the front of the school. It was created by artist Alicia Uccello alongside a team of grade seven students. They sketched in the hillside garden and then they brought those sketches to create a completed image. This mural is beautiful and brings a little bit of nature into our front yard. What I've shown you so far in this video are just some of the environmental artworks in this schoolyard. Some are permanent installations, like the 250 leaves in the Axe of Green pathway that encircles the school. And others are temporary, like the medieval garden artworks or the sky garden, all made by primary children. What all of these have in common, however, is the hope they embody. That through this collaborative and ongoing exploration of their local environments, the children involved in the creation of these artworks will develop deep and long-lasting connections to all forms of life in the places and spaces in which they live and learn. Our hope is that it leads to a desire to live more sustainably in these places now and in the future. It's been a joy for me to work on this schoolyard over the past decade alongside children, teachers and parents working on these environmental artworks. I hope some of these ideas are ones that you can implement into your own schoolyard too.